Okay, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Patoba Mhache, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Geography, Faculty of Arts and Resource Sciences, the Open University of Tanzania. Welcome to Knowledge Area 2 of the ORM 106, Gender and Natural Resources Management. In this knowledge area, the big focus is on forest challenges and conservation. That is Lecture 2. In Lecture 3, we'll focus on deforestation and the measures to address the deforestation. Introduction. This is the second knowledge area in this course, that is ORM 106, and this is a compulsory course to all students taking Bachelor of Arts Natural Resources Assessment and Management. The lecture attempts to explain the importance of forests, challenges facing forests, and conservation of the forest. Learning objectives of the course of the lecture. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to define the term forest, describe the importance of forest, and also identify challenges facing forest, and lastly, describe the management and conservation of forests. The first question we need to answer is what is forest? Forest is defined in different ways and by different people or different authors. The word forest is derived from the Latin word that is forest, meaning outside the village boundary. And the forest, by definition, refers to a large tract of land covered by trees, shrubs, herbs, and associated plants, including grasses and living organisms, including microorganisms, which also support a wide variety of life. There are a number of different types of forests which can be seen in different parts of the world, such as tropical forest, temperate and coniferous forest. In other forests, in other areas, forests are grouped as natural forest and planted forest. And sometimes in urban areas, we have the so-called urban forest. All these types of forests support different kinds of flora and fauna as they thrive in different climatic conditions. Though forests may be different, they generally perform the same ecological functions. What is ecological functions of the forest? There are different functions of the forest, and some of them comprise carbon storage, nutrient cycling, water and air purification, and the maintenance of wildlife habitat. So these are some of the ecological functions of the forest, regardless of the type, whether planted or natural forest. According to the clean development mechanism of the Kyoto Protocol, a forest is an area of more than 0.5 to 1.0 hectares, with a minimum trees crown cover about 10 to 30 percent, with the trees defined as a plant with the capacity of growing to be more than 2 to 5 meters tall. This is according to UNFCCC 2002. So this is what is forest. Forest have number of importance. In this part, you will learn important forests. It is obvious that forests, whether natural or planted or artificial, has both direct and indirect benefits, regardless of the type of the forest. Regardless of the type of the forest, forests provide raw materials for industries. For example, we have matches industries, we have industries making papers and the like, so they get the raw material from the forest. We also have furniture industries or workshops, or carpentry workshops, all this get raw material from forest for making tables, beds, windows, doors, tools, and many others. So this is another importance of the forest. Forests also provide timber, wood, medicinal herbs, food, fodder, dry hay or straw used as an animal food. Also forests offer fuel, fertilizer, and fiber. However, forests help to prevent soil erosion and preserve the fertility of the soil. So the roots of the forest, of the trees, act like a glue 
or binders, which bind soil together and prevent soil erosion or soil movement. In most parts of the countries of the world, we are experiencing soil erosion because of the removal of the forest. So forest is very important in binding the soil together. Also, it reduces the speed of movement of the topsoil from one area to another. Bare soil or bare land, land not covered by trees vegetation, is susceptible to erosion. With the trees, the rate of erosion is reduced or controlled. Forests are further important to control floods. Forests reduce the speed of water, which could lead to floods if its speed is not reduced or controlled. So with the trees, the impact or the speed of floods is reduced or controlled. Another importance of forest is that forests preserve biodiversity. Biodiversity is the varieties of living organisms. It's a biological diversity of living organisms in a one ecosystem. It is the variation of living things such as fungi, algae, bacteria, plants and animals interacting with one another in the environment. So that's what we mean biodiversity. So biodiversity is also a very important part of the forest. Forests play a big role in preserving biodiversity. Apart from preservation of biodiversity, forests are the home of natural habitats such as plants, animals and birds. Thus, they preserve and protect biodiversity. Furthermore, forests also provide habitat for wild life where many species live in the forest. Also, forest is a home of wildlife animals like lion, elephant, zebra, and many others. They are living in the forest. Forest is also important in protection of water sources where loss of water due to evaporation is minimized. It is obvious that many sources of water are from the forest. So forest is a source of water. So we need to protect the forest at any cost because of its importance in water, in water protections. Forests act as a cover of the land surface. Also, forests protect the moisture in the soil and lower the temperature, with forest evaporation is minimized. So forests act as a protector of the evaporation. It helps to control the moisture in the soil as a result the soil remain fertilized or remain important for the living organisms. Forests obstruct sun rays to strike directly the soil as the result reduces the intensity of evaporation. So forests act as a protector of the soil. Forests also help to maintain the oxygen carbon dioxide balance in the nature. Forest modifies climate through carbon cycles and act as a carbon stores. However, removing forest releases carbon into the atmosphere and exacerbates the global warming, the global warming. With forest, this problem is addressed. So forest act as a carbon sequestrator. So forest is very important. Forest is a source of medicinal herbs, resulting in the making of many medicinal drugs. Most of the drugs of medicine used to treat different diseases have its origin in the forest. In some areas, forests provide human needs like food, we get fruits from the forest, that is kind of food. We get vegetables from the forest, we get different kind of the food from the forest. Also, forest is a source of fuel we are using in our home, such as charcoal and firewood. And also, most of the buildings in third world countries have their origin in the forest. We get poles from the forest, which is from the forest for constructing our houses. Last but not, forests generate income through tourism activities where they act as a tourist attractions. And also forests offer employment opportunities because in protecting the forest, we need people to patrol in the forest, to guide the forest and reduce the exploitation of the forest. So these are some of the importance of forest as a resource. Now let's move ahead about focusing on stakeholders of forests. There are many players and stakeholders of the forest. The survival of the forest is not one person task. 
is not possible for one person or one organization to deal with the forest. Mm -hmm. It is an activity of everyone. So everyone should take its role in protecting or conserving the forest. Based on the importance of forest, people are associated with forest directly or indirectly. So the following are different forest stakeholders. The first one is people living in and around the forest. These are the people who directly depend on the forest for their livelihood. They get firewood, they get timber, they get food, they get fruits fodder from the forest. So this is the first stakeholders of the forest. The second stakeholder is the industrialists who use the raw material from forest for manufacturing paper, medicine, furniture and the like. So this is also the stakeholders of the forest. The third is forest department of the government who owns the forest and control resources from the forest. So this is also a very important part of the stakeholders of the forest. Nature and wildlife organizations who want to conserve and preserve the forest. So we have WWF, they are also part of the stakeholders of the forest. Forest is very important resource in determining the survival of human being. Without forest, life may be in a problem because we have seen that forest is a source of different things including water, fuel, wood and the like. Men and women enjoy benefit of forest differently. Women collect fodder, firewood, charcoal from the forest, while men prefer making charcoal and timber which have income or money in return. So this is how the different gender benefit from that forest or from the forest. Uh, to wind up this part, we have review questions here which will guide you when reading or listening to this lecture. First question is what is forest? In the beginning I've defined what is forest, so we need also to know what is that. The second question is discuss the importance of forest. The third question, what are the stakeholders of the forest? And lastly, is the benefit of forest the same to both male and female? Discuss. So this is the review question for the lecture two. Lecture three, this is focusing on deforestation and note that this is lecture three in knowledge area two. Deforestation. This is the continuation of chapter two. It focuses, the focus of this lecture is still on forest, but specifically on deforestation and the measures to control deforestation. So this is the focus of this lecture. Learning objective of the lecture is at the end of this lecture, you will be able to define the term deforestation. Second, explain the causes of deforestation. And lastly, describe the measure to control deforestation. What is deforestation? There are different definitions of the concept of deforestation. In this lecture, three definitions are presented. The first one is that deforestation denotes the loss of destruction of naturally occurring forests primarily due to human activities. So some of the activities which can cause deforestation among others include logging, cutting of trees for fuel, slash and burn agriculture, clearing land for livestock grazing, mining operations, oil extraction, dam building, and the urban sprawl, are uh, all other types of development and population expansion. So this definition relied on the human activities which are not compatible with the forest. The second definition is that deforestation is further defined as the removal of forest or trees where it is converted into non-forest. Examples of deforestation include conversion of forest land to agricultural or urban land use. Some forests have been cleared to pave ways for agriculture, so this is also a kind of deforestation. Also, some areas have been changed to urban land use. So this is also a kind of deforestation. However, deforestation is the clearing of trees by logging and burning, transforming forest into cleared land, that is bare land. As a result of destruction or as a result of deforestation, 
about one half of the forest that once covered the earth have been destroyed or removed. So it is assumed that a lot or a big area of forest is removed every day. In Tanzania, we are losing about 1,500 1, hectares per day, per, per year. Now we have seen the definition of the deforestation. Now let's move ahead about the, the causes of deforestation. As population increase, more land is needed to provide or to produce food. In most developing countries, including Tanzania, the fertility of farmland is rapidly decreasing. This situation forces people to move into forest area and cut down trees to make room for crops. The first cause of deforestation is clearing forest to get land for building houses or establish settlement. So this is the first cause of deforestation. Due to increase of population, the demand for settlement also increases, that is increase of houses. Increasing demand for housing brought about by growing population forced population forced people to clear forest to get land for settlement as the result of deforestation. So more people, more land is required for settlement. The second cause of deforestation is excessive logging. Excessive logging activity or felling trees for wood is another cause of deforestation. This is simply logging or cutting down trees for timber making. Timber and the plywood industries are mainly responsible for the destruction of forest trees. Thus, the increased demand for timber led to rapid depletion of forest. However, clear cut logging also contributed to deforestation. It is a process that is clear cut is a process where all of the trees are cut regardless of the species leaving the ground bare. No selection is practiced in that particular place. So whatever is there is removed. Another cause of deforestation is the agricultural expansion. This activity leads to deforestation because it involves expanding agriculture in the expense of the forest. Land is limited resource. It is only through clearing the forest or reclaim the ocean agricultural land can be increased. No other way you can expand the agricultural land without exerting efforts on increasing that land to the forest or to the ocean. The conversion of forest into agricultural plantation is also a cause of deforestation. The conversion of forest into agricultural plantation is also a cause of deforestation. To provide land for food crops such as palm oil and rearing cattle and disturbed rainforest end up being removed. So some of the plantation established involve clearing of the forest, natural forest and established plantation. So this is also causing deforestation. Another cause of deforestation is slash and burn agriculture sometimes known as shifting cultivation. So this is the system of clearing the forest, cultivating the area, use that area for a short period of time, then move to another piece of land. So this is also a cause of deforestation. This also involves fire in clearing the land. So this is a very big threat to the deforestation. This kind of agriculture, that shifting cultivation, destroy large area of forest and it also leads to loss of biodiversity. Some species are disappearing because of this kind of the agriculture which involves slash and burn, where the water, where the fire is also involved. Trees are cut and later burned to release minerals or nutrients into the soil. In the beginning, the area is very fertile, but in the course of time, the fertile of the land decreases. As a result, people are forced to move to other new land. So this process has been said as one of the main causes of deforestation. Connected to slash and burn is forest fire. Forest fire caused by careless person leads to deforestation. Some fires are incidental, are incidental while highly the majority of them are deliberate. Fires are said to chase dangerous animals like snakes and lions. 
It is also the liberate caused by pastoralists with an intention of getting good pasture during the rain season. So these are some of the way slash and burn can cause deforestation. Another cause of deforestation is overgrazing. Overgrazing is also a reason or a cause for deforestation. Overgrazing is excessive grazing of livestock plant, livestock plants on a small area. This involves keeping or grazing animals in a small area where the carrying capacity of the particular area is exceeded. Carrying capacity refers to a situation whereby the ability of the area to save certain number of animals is exceeded as a result of deforestation. Overgrazing occurs when plants are exposed to intensive grazing or extended period of time or without sufficient recovery period. So this is deforestation. Overgrazing in forests destroy newly regenerated growth. It also makes oil soil more compact and impervious. Overgrazing also accelerates the soil erosion. So this is also a problem because when the soil is compact, the regeneration of the new plants is also a problem. Trees cannot grow because the soil is very hard for trees to penetrate. Mining is also a result of human activities which also leads to deforestation. Mining refers to the process of extracting metals and minerals from the forest. Mining may also include the gravel extraction like what is done now in Bagamoyo. A lot of companies are there extracting gravel. So this gravel, if not well controlled, the area is now changing to deforestation. Removal of vegetation for mining purposes such as gold, copper, or aluminium involve clearing large tract of natural forest. In India and South Africa, in India and South America, rainforests have been destroyed by the building of hydroelectric power dams. Mining is generally very destructive to the environment. In order to mine, trees and vegetation are cleared and burned. So this is a very serious problem leading to deforestation. Large-scale mining operations use huge bulldozers and excavators to extract the metals and minerals from the soil. Okay, we have seen different uh, causes of deforestation. Now let's move to solutions to deforestation. Deforestation can be addressed by different ways. Measures to address deforestation vary from one area to another. And because the cause of deforestation varies from one place to another, also the solutions vary from one locality to another. The following are some of the measures, but not exhaustive. Forest fire should be prevented. Forest fire should be prevented. People should avoid smoking and cooking in the forest areas. Some of the fire in the forest are deliberate cause. This should be controlled by enemies because our forests are disappearing. Another solution is afforestation. People should be encouraged and sensitized to plant more trees in large area. There are several campaigns on tree planting, so people advise you to cut a tree and plant trees. So this will encourage or will make our forest to regenerate. Another solution to this is restocking. For example, we have talked here about overgrazing. Overgrazing is a cause of the deforestation. So this can be controlled by destocking or by zero grazing. So livestock keeper should reduce the number of their animals. This will give plant opportunity to generate. So people should consider the carrying capacity of an area instead of exceeding the number which can be feed in a small area. Control mining extractions. After extracting minerals in a particular area, Trees must be planted as a way of returning the land to the original state. Another reason is controlling cutting of trees. This allows for only certain mature trees to be locked. There must be a selection of cutting of the trees which have grown instead of allowing or cutting whatever is in the forest. So this is guided activity in cutting the trees which has matured. Also education can also be a solution to deforestation. 
education campaign is an important tool to sensitize people on the importance of forest. It is said that education is a liberation tool. With education, people acquire skills and knowledge on the use and conservation of forests. The media, television, radios, newspapers and others can play an important role in forest conservation. People should be trained or educated on the importance of trees, important to forest, as forest helps to regulate the climate, control rainfall, and many others. Uh, in summary, in this lecture, you have learned about deforestation and the measures to address deforestation. The lecture starts by defining forests and later on defining deforestation as the removal of trees and left the land there. So forest is very important in the life of human beings. Different causes of deforestation were identified and discussed, such as shifting agriculture, fire, overgrazing, and mining extraction, to mention a few. Lastly, remedial measures have been identified in this study, but not exhaustive, such as afforestation, destocking, and education. Uh, also, before concluding, you have a review questions which will guide you in reading this lecture three. First question is what is deforestation? The second question, what are the causes of deforestation? And the last question is what are the measures to address deforestation? This makes the end of lecture three. Thank you very much for your attention.